Welcome once again, geeks and gamers. I'm author John A. Douglas, and I am your guide to the galaxy-spanning adventures of Starfinder. And today I am bringing to you a review of one of the more recent event modules that was released by Paizo for Starfinder, The Drift Crisis. This module lines out an event in their timeline that permanently affects the state of the Starfinder universe and for mod either modules going forward or for adventure paths that you have in the past that can be set during the event at or after the event. So let's dive into the Drift Crisis and see if this event module is worth your time and money. But first, let's check out and see how you can uh, help us in the tabletop gaming community here at Geeks and Gamers Tabletop. Consider helping us in our mission to bring guilt-free gaming to the tabletop community by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and even becoming a channel member. You'll gain access to exclusive videos, emojis, and more. And if you found this video particularly helpful, leave us a super thanks in the buttons on the bottom of the video below. Now let's get to it. The Drift Crisis is a massive event that affects the entire Starfinder universe in which the drift, the means by which faster than light travel is possible for starships, and one of the biggest reasons that the starships in the Starfinder universe are able to jump from planet to planet and arrive in a much more timely manner than they initially were able to at sublight speeds, all of a sudden the drift is broken it stops working for just a second or when it's used after uh, the moment happens it's inconsistent or it doesn't work at all. Starships that were traveling inside the drift when the drift crisis happened either disappeared or were thrown out of the drift into parts of the galaxy they did not intend to be in or they were stuck in the drift. Ships that are on the outside all of a sudden find the drift doesn't work quite the way it was supposed to or it doesn't work at all. It's thrown the entirety of the uh, galaxy into a bit of a panic and something of a crisis state because now the planets that rely on each other to help their economy run and to keep their political alliances going find themselves now almost isolated unless they are within sublight uh, distance of each other. This module is about running adventures and entire campaigns within the drift crisis itself. It deals with the aftermaths on as many fronts as possible, and it is extremely dense with storytelling potential. It goes into almost excruciating detail about how this affects every world in the known Starfinder universe. Planets uh, and systems from every module that have been mentioned before get some kind of breakdown in this guide as to the aftermath effects of the Drift Crisis from the packed worlds to near space to the vast and the distant uh, corners of the galaxy to the Vescarium, the Aslanti Empire, how the economies are faring, how the religions are handling this. Triune, the church of the, uh, the machine god, especially is affected because Triune was the one who brought the gift of the drift to the knowledge of the universe to start with. It outlines what the governments are doing, what different factions are doing, how uh, individual uh, cities and planets are responding to or resulting in uh, the chaos that came from the drift suddenly not working without any explanation. The bulk of what the book provides is a staggering 20 adventure seeds to, in order for a DM to find a place to insert your players and run an, an adventure through uh, a crisis point somewhere in the Starfinder universe. No matter where they decide to land at and press onward through the adventure, there's something for almost anyone. Multiple types of adventures. The adventure seeds don't necessarily go into the extreme depth that a full-fledged adventure path does, but it does outline where the characters are, the situation that's going on around them, important NPCs, uh, GM resources in little stat blocks on the side that give the GM a little more information and uh, if they choose to go into that level of depth for uh, the starter point for this particular campaign or uh, session. What monsters they can expect to encounter, what sort of factions and enemies might be uh, against them at that point. 
And it doesn't necessarily line out where their campaign needs to end. Uh, the adventure seeds uh, function more as a really strong starting point and give the GM enough latitude to be able to make up where the adventure will go on from there. It does give a vague end point for certain adventure seeds, and you can string some adventure seeds together, though some of them start when the crisis happens, some uh, after it's already happened, and then some are set farther away from uh, where almost anything is happening. Some are straightforward, some have an almost sandbox element to them, but they provide the bones for uh, an adventure, uh, even an entire campaign that a good GM will be able to build on. The toolbox section of the module helps the GM bring the adventure seeds to a satisfying conclusion. It outlines several resources that they have available. Like most things that Paizo releases for Starfinder, there is a wealth of extra things available for your characters, items, weapons, new spells, and unique themes that are, are unique specifically to the Drift Crisis itself. Things like Opportunist and Drift Survivor. Arguably, you won't be playing through all of these adventure seeds. Many of them are not really set to be stacked on top of each other like this, as many of them are set towards the beginning. Uh, but it does help you move your players through the Drift Crisis, and provide this a conclusion, and then help them move on to deal with the long-term ramifications of the Drift Crisis in the Starfinder universe, if you so choose. Now, as far as the cause of the Drift Crisis goes, there are a few options that the module presents uh, that a lot of them will be the mystery that's the impetus for your characters to go exploring, potentially solve. Now, while the actual cause of it might be up to the individual GM at their table to determine which one is your particular game's version of the cause, there is one that is considered the, quote, Starfinder canon. Uh, version that they use from this point forward. So in that regard and several others, it makes this a module more for a GM to use. Uh, if you're just a player and you're curious about the uh, Drift Crisis, this would not be something that you would pick up and just idly leaf through. Spell users get some interesting spells that are unique to the Drift itself. So if you're looking to spice up your spellcaster a little bit, you'll find plenty to like in this module. And one of the last sections of the module provides with a helpful uh, DM guide in order to facilitate taking previous adventure paths like uh, Against the Aeon Throne or Dead Suns and running them with the Drift Crisis in mind. So if you are the kind of table that likes to keep a very strict canon for characters uh, running through and you hadn't played those adventure paths but you wanted to have the Drift Crisis be either a part of it or happen uh, after the Drift crisis you can do that for the score I'm going to give this a technical score of 7 out of 10 I can't underscore the amazing amount of content packed into this module it's one of the most comprehensive tabletop RPG modules I've ever seen the event covers so many possibilities and potential adventures that I doubt any GM won't have any trouble finding anything that feels right for them. Unfortunately, I also feel like the Drift Crisis Adventure Seeds aren't going to get see a lot of play long term. I don't see most tables running an Adventure Crisis uh, Adventure Seed more than once or twice or maybe one campaign set within the crisis itself and then moving on to something else with the Adventure Seeds being fodder for later campaigns and uh, later ideas. And then there's the fact that the GM reference sections also reference other modules and other adventure paths from Paizo uh, for the GM to get the full context of something or to give them an extra resource to look at. Meaning you may have to buy something extra in order to play catch up or know a little bit more in-depth knowledge about something. It's not a positive in my book, but it's not enough to sink the ship. Now for the woke score, I'm giving this a 1 out of 10. It's actually hard to get a point on the woke system because it means that there's something in the content that feels egregious, uh, feels like it's pushing something, or it's trying to tell you how to play. Once you notice intersectionality, you can't unnotice it. Paizo itself is a very woke company behind the scenes. Usually, though, that doesn't bleed over into their content. In this case, I couldn't help but notice. 
the book lists a, a large number of NPCs or people of importance. Of the ones listed, there are two non-binary, one pangender, whatever that is, nine agender, mainly androids who arguably don't really have a sex at all, 15 men, and there are 27 female NPCs, most of them either in positions of leadership in factions, government, or in charge of something like the captain of a ship or an establishment you have to go to. They outnumber the men and equal the rest of the gender squad put together. They also get the majority of the NPC art. Now the writing around them might be good, but the substantial amount of them and, uh, is just feels oversaturated and it feels a little egregious like they're trying way too hard nothing about it really holds the material back but I gotta say I give this a woke score of 1 out of 10 so we come to the geeks and gamers tabletop score which we take the one from the woke score and take it away from the technical score leaves the drift crisis with a geeks and gamers tabletop score of 6 out of 10 the woke score notwithstanding, there is a staggering amount of information for a GM wanting to run a Starfinder campaign set in the Drift Crisis at almost any point and any uh, location in the uh, Starfinder universe. It provides a lot to help the GM guide their players through the, the events of the cataclysmic uh, Drift Crisis. But again, I feel like this will not get as much play on the table as uh, one might think. I think the Drift Crisis is good, but not great. It's an exceptional amount of world building that potentially won't see a lot of play. It's marred by just a touch of identity politics. Speaking just for myself, I don't think this is necessarily worth the money to uh, spend and get it brand new. If you just want a little bit extra Starfinder stuff, wait till this probably hits a humble bundle and grab it there for a little cheaper. But that's what I think. What do you think? I'm author John A. Douglas, and I will see you in the stars. And that's going to be it for today. Thank you for watching. Consider liking this video, subscribing to our channel. And if you found this video helpful, consider leaving us a super thanks in the buttons below at the bottom of the video. You can also join our Gilded server where you can talk with me and the rest of the Geeks and Gamers tabletop crew as well as the rest of our growing fellowship. You can even find a table to play at and it's all free. May all your games be guilt-free and fun and we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.